Hello and welcome to the National Catholic College Admission Association College Fair. We are so excited to have you participating in this event today. My name is Jennifer and I'll be your facilitator. We've got some fantastic schools. I'm really excited for you to hear from each of them. They each have six minutes to share about their institution. But they will be here during the session to answer any additional questions that you have. Your camera and your microphone are off though, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can ask questions using the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. You can leave a question for any, any and every school to answer, or you can direct, a school, direct your question to a specific school by including their name in with your question. This is just one of many different sessions that are happening. We hope that you are really enjoying this event and you still can sign up for our next round following this one. You can check the same website where you registered initially, check out that schedule, see if you'd like to join us again and sign up at strivescan.com slash NCCAA. This presentation, as well as all of the presentations, are being recorded, and they will be available in the coming days at the same website where you registered. I'm now excited to turn it over to our very first school. We're going to be hearing from Aquinas College. Thank you so much, Jennifer, and welcome, everyone. My name is Lindsay Hansen. I'm uh, an assistant director of admissions at Aquinas College in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, just a little bit about Aquinas. Uh, of course, I'm excited to share with you. Um, we are a small private Catholic liberal arts school located in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Bit of a smaller school. Average class size is going to be about 16 students. So I always tell my students, you're not going to see any 300, 400 person lecture halls on our campus. You're, you're really going to get some incredible one-on-one -on -one attention with your professors. I'm also an alum of Aquinas, so I have plenty of uh, professor stories of getting that one-on-one -on -one attention, and I knew personally that that was definitely what I wanted. I wanted something smaller, um, and Aquinas kind of gave me the best of both worlds. I got the one-on-one -on -one attention with my professors, but then I also got to be in the second biggest city in Michigan, which is Grand Rapids. Um, you know, having that small one-on-one -on -one connections with your faculty and with your staff uh, they really get to know you and you don't just um, you're just not another number in their classroom you're going to be you in every single one of your classes and how they do that too is by getting to know you and getting to know what you want to go in and do and with Grand Rapids right at our fingertips we have so many opportunities for students our top three programs are definitely going to be education business and health sciences but I always say that the other two that we have are our social sciences and undecided um, that is a big benefit of a liberal arts school is that you have a lot of time to figure out what you want. I changed my major three times and I thought I knew exactly what I wanted to study when I graduated from high school. So I really was able to work with my professors and to figure out what I really wanted to do. And going to a liberal arts school allowed me the time to be able to do that. At Aquinas, you don't actually have to declare your major till you're a junior. So you have some time to kind of really figure those things out. Plus, we have so many amazing opportunities, obviously in the classroom, but outside the classroom. Um, we have about 50 to 60 clubs to organizations for our students to get involved with. Everything from our outdoor and recreation club to um, uh, we've had a, a, an improv troupe. Um, we have a psychology club. We have a sports management club. Um, we just started a marketing club, an equestrian club, a lot of things to do in the classroom, but then, of course, outside the classroom, too. I mentioned Grand Rapids, of course. Um, we have our uh, Medical Mile, which uh, houses Helen DeVos Children's Hospital, Spectrum Butterworth Hospital, Cancer Research Pavilions, Van Adel Research Institute, one of the uh, top research institutes in the country. Um, and all of our students get that, like I said, right at their fingertips. And they have all of those opportunities to go and do uh, job shadowing or internship opportunities. Um, outside of Grand Rapids and going maybe a little further, we have um, nine study abroad or eight, I'm sorry, eight study abroad programs, Ireland, France, uh, Costa Rica, Italy, Spain, Japan, Germany, and England. Um, we're really excited too. We are about to phase out Costa Rica and then start an Argentina program too. Um, we also have a Poland trip, which um, is going to be in, located in the summer. Um, so it's a six week trip in the summer. If you've ever thought about studying away or studying abroad, ask about it in your college process because um, I, I know that's one thing I definitely wish I would have done uh, when I was in school. So we have incredible opportunities. We're about to celebrate our 50th anniversary with our Ireland program. 
Um, Ireland, England, and Italy are the three you do not need a foreign language requirement for. The others you would need at least two years at the college level of that language. So a lot of opportunities, plus, of course, service opportunities within our campus ministry team, um, you know, different places like Dominican Republic. Um, we've gone uh, to Peru. We've gone, you know, stayed in the country, um, at Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, South Dakota, um, the, uh, Arc uh, Acadia National Park in Maine. We've done a lot of different service projects. So uh, your, you know, your your passion can go even further outside of you know Aquinas to Grand Rapids to um, to anywhere in the in the world really. And I think Aquinas, being that small private Catholic liberal arts school, um, can really give that to to our students. Um, for this year, I can I can officially say um, for my class of 2023. Um, so if I do have any juniors on the call, um, we are going to be test optional. So we will not need your test score in order to make an admissions decision. We've done that for the past couple years as well. So um, for my class of 2021 and my class of 2022, we were test optional and we will be for my class of 2023 as well. Um, our merit awards, because like I mentioned, we are a private school. Um, so I'm sure we want to talk, uh, you know, a little bit about financial aid and those amazing opportunities. Um, our, this For this past year, for my class of 2022, our scholarships, our merit awards ranged from $14,000 to $24,000. And that's every year up to five years. And this past year, it was purely based off of GPA. So um, I can't officially say anything quite yet on how we're running that for next year. Like I mentioned, we're not um, requiring test scores for this for this upcoming year. Um, if I can leave you with one thing, um, you know, because I think I have what, about a minute left um, before before we move on to the next next play, uh, next institution. Uh, Aquinas has really given me everything and given me the world. I'm a, it's a big benefit that I went there, and of course, I work here now too, and I've loved it so much that I haven't left. And what I can say is Aquinas allowed me the opportunity to learn how to advocate for myself and grow as a person, um, as a scholar, and in my career. And that's what I wish for you to find some place that's really going to be. Um, a home for you for the next four years. I think all of us could agree to that. That's our that's our job is to try to see what is your right fit. Um, if you have any other questions about Aquinas, I'll put them my details in the chat. But um, excited to answer some questions at the very end too. Thanks so much. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Lindsay, for starting us off and for sharing about Aquinas. We're moving on to our second school. We're going to be learning all about Carlo University. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And here we go. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Susan Winstall. I'm the Senior Associate Director of Enrollment at Carlo University. On behalf of Carlo, I would like to say Cade Milapolce, which is Gaelic for 100,000 welcomes. Carlo is a small private Catholic university offering both excellent professional and liberal arts programs. We were founded back in 1929 by the Sisters of Mercy, who were very much committed and still are to service, social justice, and very welcoming of everyone, regardless of where you come from, your background. And I have been at Carlo now for over 29 years. I can absolutely attest to that. By the numbers, we're about 2,000 students, so we're considered a small university. We have about 1,300 undergraduate students. 11 to 1 student faculty ratio, average class size of 15 to 20, very small, very personalized. We have 14 athletic sports. We are um, a very secluded 14 acre campus in the Oakland area of Pittsburgh. We offer 50 undergraduate programs. And probably what we're most proud of is 98% of our alumni are, are, are either employed or seeking graduate degrees within six months after graduating. We have several signature programs. These are our larger, more, populated, more popular programs, ones we're known for in the region. These are the healthcare programs in the, the nurse, the programs in the healthcare area. Nursing actually is our largest. It is a BSN, but we have an RN to BSN completion. We have an amazing skills lab. You can see a little bit of it here in this picture. Our nursing faculty are all nurses. We have amazing clinical opportunities. And probably what we're most proud of is we've had the highest pass rate in the region on the NCLEX exam, which is the licensing exam that students need to pass to be able to practice as a nurse. Equally impressive biology and chemistry, wonderful preparations for healthcare uh, careers. And we've got some really unique majors at Carlo. We have cardiovascular perfusion and interoperative neuromonitoring and 
public health and respiratory therapy, I invite you to check out our website uh, to learn a little bit more about those programs. Our signature programs in the helping profession, we have an amazing art therapy preparation program, which actually combines um, art with psychology and counseling courses, preparing students to go on to get their master's and become an art therapist. We have both early childhood and early development and learning. And one of the amazing things for our students is we have both a campus school, kindergarten through eight, and a daycare right on location for students to get some practicum experience. And our psychology and social work programs both come with concentrations to prepare you for graduate school. Our signature programs in the creative expression side, lots of different options in art, uh, painting, drawing, ceramics, graphic design, art history, art education. We have um, a variety of communication programs we offer. We have a creative writing, we have English and many more. And some of these programs can actually be, can be combined with each other. Students can double major, major minor, and making you more marketable in the workforce. And if you're really not sure about what you wanna do, we have a deciding pathway that you can start in, uh, work with faculty and our amazing career development office to really discover what your passion is. So beyond the classroom, lots of things we offer with, uh, to students, civic engagement and service learning opportunities are embedded in all of our curriculums. We offer students the ability to do research, internships and professional work experiences, study abroad. We actually have a branch in Carlow, Ireland, if you want to visit, a student leadership, campus ministry, resident life, a plethora of student uh, clubs and organizations, and don't forget about our 14 varsity sports. So Pittsburgh is our city. We're not actually in the city, but you can see how it sits behind us. You can see how close we are in proximity. Pittsburgh's been voted one of America's most livable cities. It's home to numerous Fortune 500 headquarters and more than 50 renowned healthcare um, systems. So if you're looking for amazing internships and quality um, uh, clinical opportunities, this is the place. It's also considered a world-class culture and arts community. Oakland, we're actually in Oakland, which is the uh, Pittsburgh's innovative corridor known as the Educational Medical and Technical District, one of high, the highest concentrations of college-age students in the United States. We actually let our students cross-register at all of the neighboring universities and exceptional internships. By the time students graduate Carlo, they will have participated in at least three or more internships. Admissions. All students are assigned a personal enrollment counselor like myself. It is free to apply. We accept the Common App or you can go on our website and create a Bridge to Carlo account. We are rolling admissions, so we do not have a deadline. We are test optional. So when we get your transcripts, we can actually review you for both admission and scholarships. We have merit scholarships ranging up to 20000 these can be combined with athletic scholarships, honor scholarships. They can be combined with the Catholic High School Award. If you're graduating from a Catholic high school, we have the Legacy Award, and we also have college and high school awards. And in addition, we encourage all of our families to file the FAFSA, that's the free application for federal student aid, to see what additional financial aid that you might be eligible for. So we invite you to connect. I have a local number posted here. I have a toll-free number. There is the email address. Here is the website. We are on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. We are still accepting applications for fall 2022 for seniors who are out there. Juniors will usually have the applications by August 1st, and we are accepting visits during the week, and we have some weekend programs. Love to connect with you. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Susan, for presenting on Carlo. Our next school today is going to be St. Mary's College of California. Hey everybody and happy Sunday. My name is Jenna Sherino. I serve as the Associate Director of Admissions for St. Mary's College of California. So I'm super excited to share um, all the unique academic programs and social experiences that make St. Mary's one of the colleges that change lives, which is a consortium of 45 liberal arts colleges across the entire country that focus on a dedicated um, advancement to a student-centered search process. We're located in Moraga, California, which is about 40 minutes directly east of San Francisco. We're right in the heart of the East Bay. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, our undergraduate population is about 2,300 students. So certainly, um, as a liberal arts college, we invest in collaboration, discussion, and dialogue through about 19 students as our average class size. At our core is a liberal arts core curriculum. So students, at the same time that you're pursuing your degree, you will be able to take courses outside of your major. So to expand your background, to really get a full and holistic foundation across different areas in academia. 
We're a Catholic LaSallean college, um, and we also feature Division I, uh, 16 Division I NCAA sports for men and women, as well as 23 different club and intramural sports. We compete in the West Coast Conference. We are um, ranked one of the highest in the West Coast Conference every year um, for so many of our student athletes. Um, there's a very strong sense of school spirit at St. Mary's, despite being a small school, which I think is really great. Students are very uh, passionate about being Gales. To share our Catholic LaSallean background with you, um, it's, a, it's a very unique identity for our college. Students really live the LaSallean traditions in our mission and in our day to day. Um, our core principles were defined by the work of Jean Baptiste de La Salle, who was the revolutionary for education and is known as the patron saint of teachers. Um, so the Christian brothers adapted um, how we live through his work, which really recognized that education should not be considered a privilege because it should not just be for the privileged. Education should be accessible to all. Um, and our five core principles include respect for all persons, faith in the presence of God, concern for the poor and social justice, quality education, and inclusive community. Um, what's so distinctive about the LaSallean community itself is that purposefully and intentfully, we all live in solidarity with each other. We're all here to uplift and support each other on our lived mission as we discover that purpose. Um, students at St. Mary's are incredibly diverse in every way, spiritually, culturally, um, socioeconomically. 50% of our students do identify um, as Catholic, um, and certainly 50% of our students are also exploring other religions or maybe even non-denominational. So you have a place um, and are encouraged to pursue and be called into faith in the way that you feel best guided and served by. Um, there is no mass requirement. Students will take two theology and religious studies courses throughout their four years at the college. Um, and service is incredibly something that's derived from that experience too, um, advocating for self and others. We have 43 different academic programs at the college um, across our School of Science, the School of Liberal Arts, and the School of um, uh, Economics and Business Administration, Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science degrees. There are no impacted programs, um, so we don't have any programs that limit the number of students that are accepted at the time of admissions. And it is actually not required to declare your major until after the end of your first year. So you really get a chance to hit the ground running and start figuring that out. Um, there are no teaching assistants, so no graduate students teach any of our classes. All of our courses are faculty taught, and 97% of our faculty have earned their postdoctoral degrees in their field. Um, two very defining characteristics of our academic community are collegiate seminar and January term. Collegiate seminar is part of the core liberal arts curriculum. It's a class that students take once a year, so it's a semester class, and it's actually um, a curriculum and the study of the great books. Um, so everything from uh, Socrates to Plato to Aristotle, Shakespeare, Mark Machiavelli, um, Siddhartha, Lao Tzu, Maya Angelou, Martin Luther King, um, that really allows students to examine the great books of time, of history, of science, and bring to light conversation and dialogue and make meaning through conversation and dialogue. So very much an exposure on how to think, not what to think. And the great thing about it is there's no right or wrong answer. So every they, everything that the students are contributing is meaningful and valuable. January term is my favorite thing about St. Mary's. It's a short term during the month of January. It's a one credit class students can take either on campus or they can do um, a domestic or an international study abroad experience. Courses on campus are incredibly academically focused, but also with a little bit more of an out of the box twist. So for example, like the science of cooking, dog behavior and dog psychology, um, Bay Area ecology, uh, real estate economics, those kind of things. Um, and we also have students that travel every year all over the world, about 25 different trips um, throughout the United States and internationally every single year for January term. Um, you really do enhance your sense of global citizenship and expand your worldview through a course experience like that. Regarding the first year application, as a student, there are two application deadlines. You can apply for early action or regular decision through the common application, um, just your letter of recommendation and your high school transcript. We are test optional. Actually, we're hoping to consider ourselves test blind. Uh, SAT or ACT scores are no longer considered as part of the admissions practice or scholarship practice. Speaking of scholarships, St. Mary's does award between $13,000 up to $29,000 
of renewable merit scholarships each year. The middle 50% of our last income in class for admission and also for scholarship selection fell between about a 3.3 to a 3.9 academic weighted GPA. Um, and those are renewable for all four years also. If we have any students that are um, current students at LaSallean or Christian Brothers High Schools, we do automatically award a LaSallean Leadership Scholarship at the time of admissions as well. 90% um, of our students do receive significant need-based aid from St. Mary's. Um, so please don't hesitate to be in touch with us along any step of the way. I'm happy to answer any questions for you, but I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you so much, Jennifer, for sharing and presenting on St. Mary's College of California. All right, as you can see from the screen, we are heading next to learn all about Marquette University. Hi everybody, my name is Katie Hennecke. I'm the Associate Dean in the Office of Admissions at Marquette University in downtown Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'm also a double Marquette alum. So this is a place that I care a lot about. I've also lived um, very authentically this experience that we're gonna be talking about during our six minutes today. So we like to start when we're talking about Marquette with a lot of the outcomes data. So we call it the last things first approach because when you're looking at the college landscape, you're trying to figure out where you're gonna go for the next four, or beyond years of your life, it's really important to know how Marquette is gonna help get you there. So 90% of our students graduate on time for their program or major. There are 80 different majors to choose from. Because of our medium size, students have really strong relationships with professors and advisors, which help them kind of on that launch point um, for professional graduate school um, and other interests that they might have post-graduation. We offer 35-year accelerated degree programs. So if you are thinking about pursuing something like an MBA, you're able to stay for one additional year and graduate with that master's in business administration along with your bachelor's degree. And then 75% of our students graduate with relevant hands-on experience. So it is very hard to get through Marquette and not have one of those really impactful experiences. We're also sixth in the nation for job placement. So I think that's really important when you're considering about that investment on the front side, knowing that Marquette is really going to help you find that career and that really fulfilling purpose after your time on our campus. So overall, quick statistics for Marquette University. So we are a mid-sized institution. As I mentioned, we have just about 8,000 undergrads, 12,000 students overall. Our students come from 49 out of the 50 states currently. We're hoping for 50 in this freshman class. Um, and close to 50 different countries as well. So we get a really diverse student experience. Right now we are an emerging HSI, Hispanic Serving Institution, and we're hoping to achieve that formal designation in the next five years. We're Catholic and Jesuit, so we were founded in that faith tradition. We'll talk about that just slightly after. And then we also have Division I Athletics. We're located in the downtown area. So when you think about a really awesome place to go to college, you wanna make sure that there's a lot to do and Milwaukee really acts as an extension of our on-campus classroom experience. So this is a little bit about who we are, but it's also important to touch on the value system that brought us here. So the Catholic Jesuits were founded about 500 years ago, and they really care about holistic education and the term that you can see up here on the screen, care of personnel, so care for the whole person. So everything that we do at Marquette is about helping you figure out how you're gonna take your talents, passions, and abilities to solve the world's real problems. Internships are a great way to kind of dip your toes into the water. Our engineers especially love things like engineers without borders trips. We have students in the pre-health professions going on global medical brigades trips. So they're figuring out what they want to do kind of post our campus, while they're still on our campus. And they're applying what they're learning inside of the classroom to these real world service and community service experiences. About 80% of our student body does volunteer work before they graduate. So certainly it's never required of students, but that social just justice commitment and learning by experiencing is really a big um, tenant of a Marquette education. In addition to outside of the classroom experiences that you can see listed here, Inside of the classroom at Marquette, you're gonna have a really robust experience in our core curriculum. So at Marquette, you take classes in our core curriculum for all four years, alongside classes in your major for all four years. And the core curriculum helps you explore a social justice theme. You take a capstone prior to graduation. So it's less about prereqs and getting them out of the way and more about really intentionally figuring out what it is you wanna study and the why behind it. We have seven direct admit colleges at Marquette. So when you apply to Marquette, you're going to be admitted directly to one of these seven colleges. And that means you get to take 
classes in this coursework right away from day one on our campus, which is a huge asset for students. If you're undecided or what we call multi-interested, that helps you figure out sometimes what it is you do or do not want to study. But if you're really passionate about studying something like nursing, you get to start in those nursing classes right away. Outside of the classroom then, we have things like an honors program. We have really robust pre-health advising for students. Internships and co-ops are built into our curriculum and those accelerated degree programs, as I mentioned before. Our location in downtown Milwaukee really serves, as I said, as an additional extension of our classroom experience. So up here on the screen, you can see a few of the neighborhoods that we have established here really closely connected to our campus. And our students on a daily basis are able to really easily kind of live, breathe, and experience this kind of urban metropolitan life in addition to being a college student and never having to sacrifice one or the other. As we zoom in just slightly, you can see Marquette's campus like a puzzle piece in the city of Milwaukee overall. It's about three blocks wide, 11 blocks long, and about 90% of our students live on our campus. I think that's especially important for students coming from the coast and from the south, knowing that you're gonna have things to do on the weekend, you're going to have study partners, our students are here living in this robust residential environment all throughout the school year. Last but not least, how do you get to our campus? So we are a holistic review admissions office. So we look at every single material that you send us. Most emphasis is gonna be placed on the courses you've taken in high school, the rigor of that coursework and how you've prepared to be a student on our campus. We accept the common application. We also have our own application, it's free to apply either way. The application for the next cycle will open on August 1 and be due to our office on December 1st. We are test optional. So students that are interested in submitting a test score like an ACT or SAT are free to do so. But if you do not send us a test score, we'll really put all the emphasis on that transcript and you still can qualify for our highest scholarships. Everybody gets notified at the same point in time on December 21st. And then the last thing that I'll leave up here really slightly is our QR code. So if you would like to visit our campus, we offer daily visits six days a week, um, including the weekends. And then we also have several open houses. Thanks so much. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Katie, for sharing all about Marquette. All right, we are on to our next school. We're going to be learning about Lemoyne College. Okay, thanks so much. So I'm Kate Diamond from Lemoyne College in Syracuse, New York. I'm the Director of Regional Recruitment. Um, so you're looking at an aerial view of the Lemoyne campus right here. And just a little bit about our location. So Lemoyne is located in Syracuse, New York. Um, we are a suburban campus though, so we're not part of the downtown area. So we have a really beautiful 160 acre campus, but only five miles from everything that Syracuse has to offer as a city, plus close to Syracuse University. So it's a fantastic college town. The great thing about Syracuse is its proximity to other Northeast cities as well. So we're within five hours of Boston, New York City, Philadelphia, and lots of places around, which is fantastic for excursions outside of campus, looking for jobs once you graduate, and is a really great location for us as far as our students' um, access to internships, um, things to do, um, and having an enjoyable college experience. Um, we also have an international airport lo located nearby. Syracuse, as you can also imagine, it's a snowy uh, city uh, during the year, um, but our students really enjoy um, all the four seasons, great access to skiing and snowboarding. Um, Syracuse as a city has fantastic food and culture, so lots to do as a college student. Um, as my colleague from Marquette was mentioning, we are also one of the 27 U.S. Jesuit colleges and universities. Lemoyne is actually the youngest of these institutions. We're also on the smaller side, just under 3,000 undergraduate students. Um, so what does it mean to be Jesuit? And Katie kind of um, talked about this a little bit and care of personnel is care of the whole person, but I'll take it a little bit further to talk about what that means at Lemoyne. Um, so we offer a unique program called Manresa, and that's focused on a Jesuit principle. And that program is all of our students have the opportunity to discover who they are, what they're good at, what is their place in the world. So it's actually a four year self discovery program where you meet with faculty and staff, you meet in small groups with different students, all the while figuring out, you know, what are my talents? What are my skills? You know, what do I need to develop in order um, to become a successful professional once I graduate from college? So our students who've participated in this Man Race of program have said, 
it was one of the most valuable things that they did during their time in college. Um, obviously, there's a big focus on social justice and service. And similarly to a lot of my other colleagues who've spoken with you all, um, international travel on the service level is something that's available to students um, as well as domestically. Um, the picture on the top right that you see right there is actually a student who's been featured in a lot of different um, news reports. Um, one of our graduates who started Tiny Homes for Good and actually in um, areas throughout the US is able to actually build tiny homes for the homeless population. So a really big focus on entrepreneurship, especially from that social justice side as well. Um, in addition on entrepreneurship, we actually offer a unique program for students who want to start their own businesses. And students can participate in our version of the shark tank, which is called the dolphin tank because we are the Lemoyne dolphins where students can actually compete um, for up to $35,000 to start an idea that they might have for a business. So just something again, where we really focus on our students, what their strengths are and helping you develop during your four years. Um, as far as academics, as you can imagine, as a smaller school, very personalized attention. Um, I can just give an example of within our business school. I mean, we don't operate the business school like in a traditional classroom setting. Um, our classrooms are set up like conference rooms. Um, the first floor is actually the stock exchange. So we want to give students kind of real world experiences rather than sitting in a lecture hall style of learning. Um, as far as academics go, we do offer direct entry programs as well as opportunities for students to be an undecided student within their first two years in our track program. So if you are unsure of what you'd like your major to be, you can actually take small versions of a lot of different classes until you figure out what your goal is, all while meeting with an advisor specific for students within um, this track program, helping students figure out their way and their path. Um, if you are interested in a particular major or program, um, we offer three different schools. The School of Arts and Sciences, the Madden School of Business, which is an AACSB accredited business school program, as well as the Purcell School of Professional Studies. Our direct admit programs include nursing, we have a physician assistance program, occupational therapy, and these are all programs at the terminal degree right at Lemoyne as well. And we have over 30 different majors and a lot of minors. And I, I focus on that to say, a lot of our students have varied interests. So it's the kind of place where, yes, maybe you're interested in business, you want to be a psychology major, but you're also interested in entrepreneurship, you're interested in theater. I mean, we want our students to have that well-rounded experience. So it's not uncommon for a student to have a major and two or three minors, and they can be in any um, school or program of interest. They don't have to be within one school on our campus. We have a robust inter integral honors program, and then um, much as I was talking about the entrepreneurship program, um, we have an honors program for students within entrepreneurship as well. As far as student life goes, we are a residency required institution. So while you might look at some schools that offer you know, guaranteed housing, you know, even for a few years, all of our students, A, are guaranteed housing all four years, but are also then required to live on our campus. And what that means for our students is there's a lot happening on our campus. There's that sense of community all the way from freshman until your senior year. What's nice about our housing is you start in a traditional residence hall and then move your way up into dorms, um, houses, apartments, right as part of our campus. As far as admission process goes, we offer rolling admission. Um, we are on the free on the common application as well. Um, we are a test optional institution and our um, students on average are around a 3.4, 3.5 GPA. So there's a QR code for us as well. If you'd like to scan and get more information about Lemoyne and some great facts and figures about our rankings, always a nice thing to end with as well. So thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Wonderful. Thank you, Kate, for presenting on Lemoyne. All right. Well, we have reached the end of the formal part of our presentation. Um, we do have a little bit of extra time together for some live Q&A and also to make sure that all of our attendees have a chance to check the chat, to get that contact information so that you can follow up. Because remember, six minutes is just a sneak peek at what all of these amazing schools have to offer. So I would love to invite all of the representatives back on screen to come together. So you can turn on your camera. We'll all come back together. I do want to let everyone know that Jenna, our representative from St. Mary's College of California, had to leave to attend another college fair program this afternoon. Um, and she what really, though, appreciated your time and was um, uh, thankful that you were here and would love to um, be in touch with you later. So we hope that you'll follow up with her and learn all of everything that 
there is to learn about being a St. Mary's Gale. All right, so for the representatives we have here, thank you all for coming and joining me on screen. We are gonna go in the exact same order that you presented. So we'll start with Aquinas, we'll work our way to Lemoyne. When the representative ahead of you answers the question, just feel free to turn your microphone on and, um, and feel free to answer the question. I won't call on you from person to person. We'll just kind of free, free flow in this section. All right, so the very first question I have for you, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? What's the top tip or favorite tip that you have to help our students and their families? Lindsay? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, for me, I think the biggest tip I can give in this whole, to, to students and families going through this college process is to ask questions. Um, we don't know if you have a question or if something is wrong unless you tell us. And there's only so many times I can send an email or give a call or shoot a text that says, hey, everything going okay? Hey, just checking in. There's only so many times I can do that before it becomes annoying, to, to put it bluntly, I guess. Um, but we're here to help. And in whatever that means for you, if it means, you know, you have questions on financial aid that I can't answer, let me get you in connect connection with somebody who can. If you want to know more about our, our theater program or our art program or our health sciences, I know people who can help you with that. So if you have any kind of question, want to bounce anything off of, uh, of me, uh, I'm here to just help in any way that I can. But, um, you know, we, we can't help unless you ask. So do not be afraid there to, to ask the question. There are no silly questions, no small questions. It's, it's everything is important in this process because it's a big process to go through. Um, so, yeah, don't hesitate to ask questions. Great advice. Actually, that was one of my tips. It's hard to just give one piece of advice, but, um, you know, I would say talking about a process, it is a process. So if you can start the process early, oh my gosh, that will save a lot of aggravation, a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, and ensure that you don't miss deadlines. But I'm going to throw one more little tip in there too. If you're not sure what you want to major in, or you're not sure what career path you want to follow, don't let that stop you from continuing the admissions process in looking at colleges because colleges can help you with that. There's so much resources. Um, Aquinas said it wonderfully, ask questions. And then we have, we can pull in faculty and we have career development that works with students. So don't, don't think you have to have everything figured out before you actually uh, start the admissions process, so. Um, I would really encourage a campus visit. So I was a tour guide and I'm just very biased about how important visiting a campus actually is. I think we all have beautiful brochures. We have beautiful backgrounds. It never rains. Um, and I think the only way that you can really kind of have that gut check moment is to be on our campuses. And you wanna make sure that you can picture yourself studying in the classroom, sleeping in our residence halls, trying out the food, um, and really make sure that the community members that we have on our campus match who you want to be a part of. Um, as you're looking at a future institution. And that's really hard to know from home. Hopefully you'll be able to visit so many more campuses than I think the Sears current seniors in the year before were able to. Um, but I think that campus visit, start early um, as Carlo mentioned, and then try to fit in a few campus visits just to give you some perspective ahead of that application process. Um, my tip has to do with email. So um, as Lindsay's saying, you know, contact us. Um, email is going to be the primary tool that colleges are going to use to communicate with you. And so these are the things I think that students maybe falter on, which is using your school email. It's okay to use your school email, but just keep in mind, you're getting all of your assignments. You have, you know, things coming to you from different teachers at school. So if you have, you know, hundreds of emails coming from colleges as well, can and really <laughs> cloud your inbox. So consider using a personal email address for colleges, um, if you can do that. Um, and then check your email. You know, I think that's really important too. We understand that you get contacted a lot, um, but you know you can filter out to different schools that you're most interested in. And my last tip about email would be: it's okay to opt out too, so it doesn't hurt our feelings. You know, we only want to communicate with you if you want us, if you want to hear from us. Um, so it's okay if you're feeling overwhelmed to opt out of schools that you're kind of ruling out throughout the process, and feel free to do that. I love this range of tips from both great like logistics and things to do, but then also like philosophy and ways to approach it and ideas. And I love when all the heads nod. So for everyone watching, whether it's live or the recording, you know this is good advice when you've got multiple counselors 
who are fun, approachable, welcoming people all nodding along going, yes, this is real deal info. Um, Jenna actually sent me a note too about this one because it's a question she wanted to ask, answer um, as well. And she just said to be confident in the admissions process. And I think the other counselors will echo this, that like you will find your school and to be yourself. Colleges, especially non-selective liberal, liberal arts colleges are looking for reasons to admit students and like who you are is who they want to get to know, who all these schools want to get to know is the real you. And so just be confident in that and go forward. And you can see there were already heads nodding the whole time <laughs> that it is real deal info. And you all covered some of my favorite ones. I always love to bring up the email if no one mentions it. So good job there, Kate, because uh, it is all very true about email. All right, so we have time for another question um, from each of you. I would love to know what is one thing you want students to remember about your school? You know, what's the key takeaway um, as, you know, people are leaving this presentation today uh, to carry with them? So, Lindsay? Yeah, thank you. I, I love this, this question. Um, I, I think the one thing that I always want to make sure people know about Aquinas College is that, um, you know, we were, we were founded by the Dominican sisters. So we are um, in, in true Dominican form. We uh, want to be such an inclusive environment for every single person. Our four Dominican pillars are prayer, study, service, and community. And I think if you ask any alum, um, what any of my friends who are alums or anybody on our campus, um, the biggest thing is that we are community and we are a family um, and people who step on our campus feel that community right away um, and it's 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 a, a place that you can really um, discover who you are uh, you know for four to five you know years um, in college and um, because of that one-on-one -on -one connection because of of the uh, greater Grand Rapids community we're a part of it's it's a place that really wants to help you succeed um, and uh, like Marquette said visiting is very key uh, to be able to 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 feel that community so um, yeah if you are looking into Aquinas um, that is the one thing I, I would definitely tell people you're going to see is an incredible community of people who want to see you be successful in and out of the classroom. I'm going to have to piggyback on that too. Uh, for Carlo, it is our mercy mission. Um, you know, we were founded by the Sisters of Mercy. They are so committed to social justice, very committed to helping those less fortunate, um, very much into service. And it's it's just the atmosphere, everything that we do and every decision we make really comes from the values from our Sisters of Mercy. These were a tenacious group of sisters. I mentioned we were founded in 1929. If you know your history, that's the start of the Great Depression. So uh, I would encourage um, students and families just to even research the, the background of our Sisters of Mercy. I'd say that's probably um, you know what we're the most passionate about. Um, so at Marquette, even though we're direct admission, um, we have a lot of undecided students. That's usually our most popular major for incoming students, and we call you multi-interested. Um, and I think even our students who have a major are multi-interested. Most of their parents and adults are multi-interested too. Um, and I share that example because at Marquette, there is so much to get involved with. We have over 200 clubs and organizations for students. We have about 30% of our student body that studies abroad. So we are a very active and involved environment for students to come and figure out kind of what they love doing and then take that to the next level. So really for Marquette involvement, I would say is one of our biggest traditions. So much of our student body volunteers, so much of our student body has one of those off campus or abroad experiences. Um, so really kind of that multi-interested piece, I'll leave you with that for Marquette. I think you can really find a home um, and a lot of support to help you explore whatever those interests and passions are. Um, and I'll just share about Lemoyne what I talked about a little bit, which is self-discovery. I mean, I think that's the beauty really of, of any Catholic institution, to be honest with you. I think that focus on service and who you are as a person. Um, and I think Lemoyne just does a fantastic job of helping you figure out, you know, your strengths and your talents and what you need to succeed. Um, and we always think students start with us. They're kind of a you know big fish in a small pond and we get you ready for the even bigger pond once you graduate. Awesome. Thank you all. There's always such a fun way to wrap up. And again, on behalf of Jennifer and St. Mary's, don't forget to touch base with her and learn more about what it means to be a St. Mary's scale. All right. We have reached the end of our time together. Um, we have uh, gotten to hear from some great schools today, five different schools. If one school or location drew you here today, I hope you're walking away thinking I have five schools that I need to check out because there's so much more to learn than these 
five, six minutes uh, together. For all of our representatives, thank you for being here. Your passion for the student experience in and out of the classroom really shines. You weren't just sharing the, those facts, the figures, those numbers and dates, um, but really giving insight into so much more um, about each of your campus communities. For all of our families that have been watching, all of our students have been watching, we hope this is helping you and inspiring your college search. Yes, it can get overwhelming, but I promise it is a fun adventure ahead for you. And I hope that this was a great way to either get started or continue on that journey. All right, now the logistics. When you close your window, there'll be a link to a very quick five question survey. We would appreciate any feedback that you can provide. I promise you it's really short, really. We encourage you to check back to the schedule, sign up for our next round of sessions as a part of this College for Programming. And don't forget this presentation, like so many of it, like all of the rest of our sessions for this program are being recorded. You can find all these presentation recordings in the coming days, and they'll be posted at that same website where you register and can see the schedule, strivescan.com slash NCCAA. So thanks again, everyone, for taking out time in your day. We really appreciate it. And all the best in your college search and decision journey and in the rest of your school year. Thanks again. Bye, everyone.